So my name is John Tuda, and I'm a founder and collective member here at Red Emmas, which you can see in the background. We are a worker cooperative that got started in 2004. We're run collectively on a consensus-based model, and our goal is to use the business to provide a self-sustaining foundation for a political organizing and information distribution center, as well as to model within the project the kind of democracy we think should be prevalent more frequently in workplaces today. Uh, we feel that the collective consensus process is really important, and that involves Basically, it's a practice that comes out of feminist movements, comes out of the Quakers, comes out of the anti-nuclear movement, uh, comes out of the anarchist movement, and it's a practice of doing democracy in a way that is thick rather than thin, um, rather than a, trans a symbolic transfer of power in which you spend your democratic power and then deal with the consequences for some period of time. Uh, consensus formally requires that everyone is on board with every decision that we make, and that requires talking through things, it requires a spirit of compromise, uh, it requires a way of committing to an ethics of discussion that is different from representative democracy. So consensus, even though formally it might look like a very, very strong supermajority rule, um, it's not about voting, it's not about winning people over to your side, it's about meeting somewhere where everyone can agree or at least live with the decision being taken. And the, effect, the effective dimension there is very different from what you find in, a, uh, in most situations where you're voting. And that's important to us for our politics. So we decided, um, uh, kind of coming out of the ashes of a project called Black Planet Books, which is a much more straightforward um, and I would say in retrospect a lot less successful uh, radical bookstore, um, explicitly anarchist, that we didn't really, we didn't really do accomplish that mission with that space. Um, it wasn't a space that people would just come to. It didn't really welcome diverse communities of people interested in. Uh, kind of radical political critiques, and so we thought that opening up a space that was a little more, uh, a little less sectarian, um, not pigeonholed exactly in the anarchist box, although certainly drawing huge amounts of inspiration from the history of anarchism, or named ourselves after one of the most famous American anarchists, and we've modeled our internal practices on things that have been drawn from the anarchist movement, but we felt that we needed to create a project that had a little bit broader appeal, and that also gave people a reason to come in and talk to each other that wasn't about just necessarily, I came in because I needed, was looking for a book. Uh, and that was the cafe aspect, and the cafe aspect led us to think about really approaching this project as something that wasn't just a volunteer project, but that was about worker self-management, and that could provide perhaps a, a template or a model for an alternate way of thinking about business and thinking about the way economic development might happen and the way, uh, the kind of workplaces that we'd like to see. There's other things we do for um, groups. You know, I mean, part of it is that we provide infrastructure. Uh, you know, we, students and other youth activists were protesting the youth, the youth jail in the middle of I forget what month, youth, uh, there's a Youth Justice Sunday, which happens every year, right? And they were having it out on Dunbar Field out in East Baltimore. Very, very cold day, right? You know, we had the infrastructure to provide hot chocolate, right? That's a very small thing, but it's not insignificant, right? Um, and we found that these effective dimensions, uh, again, you know, the effective dimensions around food, around, you know, warm drinks, um, are more important to social movements than you might expect. Uh, I think you saw this dramatically with something like Occupy Wall Street, right? Where you know people were looking for the message and looking for the the you know the overriding political theme, but actually a really important part of that was the fact that people were sharing food, were cooking for each other, were providing this very direct, very material mutual aid in a very horizontal fashion. Um, and we kind of see ourselves doing something like that long term.